Good morning. I'm going to talk about Brexit and what the hell is going on. I've, I've waited a few days because I was away. Um, I ran out of Wi-Fi. It's quite sad, actually. I've now got none. Uh, I need to sort something out. Everyone was using it while I was away. But anyway, there are bigger problems, apparently. And I'm going to talk about those now. And also, I also had a reason for waiting. I kind of wanted to see. I wanted to listen to, to interviews with people because I... I this this is more this isn't going to be real based in sort of uh, diagnosis of the white papers and all this sort of stuff because it goes over my head a lot of it you know i, I do take I, I listen to other intelligent people who are able to break it down okay and then build my my opinion on that so the the main part that i've got from this this final decision from checkers the summit where they're all threatened with having to walk home because they're going to have their cars taken away. Maybe that's why they all signed it then and quit later. The, the end result of that is that we are still going to take rules from the EU. So effectively we're going to be what's called a vassal state. You can maybe break that down for me and explain it to me a bit more, but I don't like the idea of that. I wanted, I voted, like I'm sure probably the majority of people watching this, to leave the EU because I don't like the EU. I'd like to go one step further. I want to see the EU dragged down and beaten to death can't stand it it's a it's a, a vicious oppressive regime very much like the soviet union that's probably why the polish the czechs and the hungarians etc etc are so um resistant to it but anyway i'm going to talk about the the conservative party mostly here i'm not going to go into labor and stuff Briefly on Labour, obviously, um, Corbyn is, I don't like him, I would not I would hate for him to be in charge um, of the country, but, and he, he would like to, he'd like to turn us into Venezuela, so I don't want him in charge, pretty much, okay, and I think he'll do anything for votes, but that is not for this one, I'm going to talk about the Conservatives. So David Cameron put the referendum in the manifesto because they were losing too many votes to UKIP. So the Conservatives, I don't believe, wanted Brexit. If they did, we'd have it by now. They just wanted to stay in power. So to guarantee being in power, well, to give them the best chance possible, they put, they played with people, they lied to people, and they said they wouldn't deliver if we voted for leave, that we would leave. And his speech is, there's no ambiguity in it. I've, I've watched it, I've listened to it a couple of times. Um, the one he did from the 9th of May 2016 and he made it extremely clear that this is a one time deal that we're not going to keep flip flopping and going backwards and forwards so I'll just move that that's a bit better with the light um, so then he left after the referendum because I think he was shocked that they got the um, they got the majority they needed or they didn't want to actually have the referendum I don't think they didn't want it. I think they wanted to share the power, so they were, oh, sorry, we'd like to give you the referendum, but, you know, can't because the other party won't agree to it. Well, there you go. Here's a majority. Get the referendum done. So he then couldn't handle it. This is, like I said, this is going to be this bloke's uneducated breakdown of it. Don't expect anything, anything other than, than just my opinions here. Um, so Theresa May stepped forward, and I quite liked the cut of her jib. Didn't know much about her. Didn't realise that, that for the years before that she'd been systematically ruining the police force in the country but um you know that's by the by now the different subject so her clarence house speech on the 17th of january 2017 she pretty much confirmed that that's what we were going to get you know she she backed up the david cameron speech um it is obvious that that rat-faced disgusting deceptive lying cow yeah yeah that's a bit harsh but i could have been a lot harsher didn't want brexit she didn't want it she's a remainer for god's sake why did we see that and it's like we're idiots we're idiots i'm not going to excuse me uh, excuse me <laughs> um aren't you a remainer oh, for fuck's sake sorry i'm gonna get silly and start swearing and stuff but you know she's clear it's so obvious now isn't it that, that she was cheating on us with the EU the whole time. She pretended to be in with us and she wasn't. <laughs> anyway, so she's now got what she wanted. 
absolute chaos and mayhem. Anyway, Michael Gove. So if you just have to look at his face, his smarmy, privileged face to know that he'd do anything for power and money. So it's not the slightest bit surprising that he's now, oh, he loves this this soft Brexit that's come up that, that they've got because he's still got a nice, powerful position and he's just going to cosy up to different people now and just change his mind a little bit. What a treacherous man he is. So David Davis comes out of this with the most credit, I think, because even though he didn't walk out then, and by the way, he should have walked out two years ago, whenever it was, when the first negotiation, it became obvious that no matter what work he was doing, and he was working very, very hard, that he was going to be uh, superseded by her upstairs, what she wants. So really, just to, you know, he didn't have the testicles to leave them. He's finally done it now, and he's really got no choice. Um, he said he didn't walk out then because he wanted to talk out through with his wife. So he's referring to an interview with Julia Harvey on Talk Radio. And, um, but he's, you know, He's shown some some sub substance by resigning his post because you know he's going to lose a little bit of money. I'm sure he's still going to be earning plenty more than me. I'm sure he'll be fine. Um, but he'd come out with some credit. Um, who I am most disappointed with now, just because I, I, I believed so much more was going to come from him, is Jacob Rees-Mogg, who... Out of all of them, I still like the man. He's impossible not to like, really. He's so posh. But in a way, he, and, he, and he's so rich that I don't think he does this for the money. You know, I, I genuinely think he, he does it because he cares. But he sh show some teeth, please, Mr. Mogg. If, if, you want, if you truly care about the people of this country that you continually say that you do and I do believe you but if you really care stop being so bloody nice about Theresa May and stop trying to always give her the benefit of the doubt what a difficult job she's got no you know the truth you know that she doesn't regret it she never has and she's done everything she can to make us as weak as we possibly can because it keeps fanning the flames and, and I'm gonna little tangent here and talk about conversations I had with quite a few passengers on this subject but one passenger in particular a little while ago who worked in the car industry is a Remainer and we not a Ramona I won't use that word to describe him because it would be insulting because he was a decent intelligent guy who just thought we're better off and, and he's probably basing it on the industry he works in and whether he's right or not I'm not an economist you know you can hear one economist say how disastrous it's going to be and another one saying how great Brexit's going to be no one really knows we're going into the unknown with this okay well the unknown from before 40 odd years ago um now the you know he, he explained how you know, just building cars it's not just you don't just get all the stuff you need and build it you know everything's got to be done in different parts and that's been purposely done by the EU country to country to country to to make it harder to make it harder to wait for anyone to leave that they can say it's about streamlining but how can that be streamlining you know it's not um for whatever reason anyway but what he said is the last two years of indecision and indecisiveness from Theresa may has caused this problem it, you know it is now they just don't know where they're where they're at with this no one seems to know in, in industry what's going on so uh, i urge people not to call remainers remainers you know, and unless they're sort of the idealised ones that just simply just refuse to accept that anyone with a different opinion to theirs has got any merit, you know, and I recommend that you listen to other people's opinions as well. I do. Um, and another quick little tangent: Peter Hitchens, brother of the Hitch, Christopher Hitchens. So he's, he's not anywhere near as um, as charismatic as his deceased brother. May he rest in peace. Uh, I've heard him talk a few times on this and he, he talks so much sense, it's ridiculous. Um, he was saying that Brexit was a bad idea for the Conservatives. It should be just one party that, that sell it. That's their manifesto. We are selling Brexit. Vote for us. We're doing it. And then you'd have had it done properly. Whether or not UKIP would have um, sort of even gone into negotiations with, with the EU, they might have done, they might not have done. Uh, whether or not they... 
um, did this Article 50, or whether they just repealed the 1972 EEC Act, I'm not sure. But you, very, very quickly, as soon as the EU showed their intentions that they weren't going to back down at all, they are going to try to punish us and make this the worst possible deal for us, just to set an example to any other uh, unruly children who, who want to speak up in class, not to do it. Um, so his point was, we shouldn't have done the referendum that way. It, it, you know, Cameron, by putting it in there, let us all down, really, because then we'd have had the choice. No, Conservatives aren't leaving, Labour aren't leaving, blah, blah, blah. oh, UKIP, they're leaving, let's all vote for UKIP. Anyway, so then other people, so, so Mog has disappointed me. I would still give him chance to just finally come out and nail his colours to the flag. And if that means that, that somehow you end up with a, a leadership campaign with Boris Johnson and him and whatever, but it needs to be done. Maybe it splits the Conservative too. I've heard that suggested. I'm not sure if I've gone about Boris Johnson yet either. I mean, this guy, I liked him quite a lot back in the day when he was stuck on a zip wire as Mayor of London, waving his flag, you know, just before the Olympics. You know, he seemed like he actually didn't care about what he said so much. He didn't care about being political. And, you know, he mumbles a lot, but I think he's a very intelligent man. And I think he's incredibly ambitious. I think he just wants to be king of the world according to his sister I read in his, one of his books. Um, so these are the politicians that are letting us down. Um, I'm going to throw Nigel Farage in there, uh, who now obviously has said, made it clear that he intends to get back into UKIP whenever he can. And that may be what swings my vote away from for Britain, because I just want this done. And even though I don't trust him completely now because of his behaviour, because of the... the problems he's caused by throwing Anne Marie under the bus and uh, just by it by supporting very poor choices for leaders of UKIP I still believe he believes in delivering a very very good Brexit for us so I would vote for him if there was if this all blew up now and there was going to be another general election and I probably would vote for Farage um Brit Girl did a really good video yesterday I think it was day before and she she got me terrified that Sajid Javid could be replacing Theresa May so that might not be a challenge for leadership that might just be that they're just setting it up for him to take over and that terrifies me for all of the obvious reasons so at that stage I, I think there's, there might have to be a general election and uh, this I, I don't care if, if me voting not for Conservatives for the first time means that um, the end up with Labour I don't care I just don't care. I'd, ra I'd rather that than just keep voting for them bastards. But obviously I'd be terrified <laughs> if Labour were in because they're going to do their very, very best to turn us into Venezuela and Soviet Union. Um, so that's my that's my very uneducated view on what the hell is going on with Brexit. And I, I just, what a mess. So, what a very British mess. You take something that could have been a lot more straightforward and you make it so complicated and so confusing that no one seems to know what's going on. You're turning people against, you're turning family members against each other. Friends are fighting in pubs. Oh, it's ridiculous. I was having a pint the other day with a, with a couple of people that, that share very, very similar views to me on most things. And we couldn't decide on for Britain or UKIP, you know, between us. We were all bickering about it. Anyway, what a mess. Someone's got to sort this out, and maybe Farage is the one. Maybe he is. Um, and then just, I want to put on the bottom of this one, this is nothing, this is nothing about Brexit now. This is about this um, these very interesting videos that uh, I saw Brit Girl mention it. Uh, British Fight. Have you been watching these ones? Sort of, it's, it's obviously Guy Fawkes mask. Uh, whoever's done it is a big fan of V for Vendetta, I think. Um, and the videos are all, or they've probably watched a lot of Saw films. And... Uh, Oh, very exciting. So I just, I just wanted to say that and it's got me thinking, oh, what's going on? What's going on? You know, there's a whole house of cards going to come tumbling down and um, nothing seems to be happening. I hope it's not a wind up. That'd be really gutted. But um, I, I did put a comment and they said, I've not been watching properly. I said, where's the action? And they and it directed me to Twitter and Facebook. So they're, they're sharing stuff on there. But if anyone's got, um, to help, help me out. Because I, oh, I get a bit bored of, I don't really do Twitter. Um, if someone's, uh, mentioned what what on earth they've 
highlighted so far and if there's actually any effects and when we're likely to see some high-ranking politicians or judges and police chiefs come crashing down uh let me know because i would just love to watch that bit of anarchy uh carry out in front of me and that's it this one's over nice to be back from a holiday i've got to go to work now and i shall see you soon give us a thumbs up subscribe if you like this one thank you bye